Thank you. All right, we're going to wrap up. Thank you, everybody, for staying. I will make it worth your while. So, Dr. Bill, about what are we going to do for the hotel of the future? Obviously, sustainability. So let's give it some perspective. Let's take it back. Now, 1992. Some of you, if you would think back, what were we doing in 1992? You, the GMs may have been working in that front desk, taking the reservations by fax, little dot matrix printing. The man in Bangkok was putting little matchsticks outside the door so you could see in the housekeepers if somebody left the room or not. That was 1992. And then 1992, something happened. We all got together and had a conference called in Rio de Janeiro. And they said, we are going to set out an agenda for sustainable development. And that's when it really started. That's when governments collaborated. In 1992 then, what was a sustainable hotel? What was a leader? A leader in sustainability then would have lit and Tauri's program and maybe be looking at some CFLs. Everybody here remembers those CFLs. Also, they're probably putting chocolates on the pillows. Remember that too? Things change. And that leader in 1992 would be a complete laggard today. So the question is, in 2022, we hear it from a lot of the leaders. And you see what's a leader. But that leader in 2022 will be maybe on par for 2030. Or maybe they'll be a laggard. It is possible because if we track and see what will be a leader in 2030, what's going to be a laggard, it's going to change the game. Think back about this trajectory. Things change. In the 90s, it was all about CFLs. It was about linen tower use. Then we get into plastic. Then we get into renewables. Now we're getting into other things. And so there's going to be some amazing leaders in 2030. And the question is, what is it going to be? But the hotel of the future, it's all about what will you need to do in 2030 because it will be expected the same way that linen tower use is expected as a basic practice. We track this. We track hotel data. It took 20 years for that linen tower use program and other things across a destination to become prevalent. But the issue now is we don't have time and things are accelerating. And so while it took 20 years for the linen tower use program to become innovative, from innovative to best practice, things could be catalyzed. And what if that trajectory built up? And that's what we're going to see because we don't have 20 more years to implement the best practices and innovations of today. It's going to be expected. So what I'll present to you are the things that will be expected by hotels in the future of 2030 that are already in place today, but you might not have thought about, but will be like, likely expected. Now, how do we know this? We work among our ESG consulting, our other work, dozens of hotel companies and industry. We track best practices. We have data for over 27,000 hotels freely available on our website and Green Lodging Trends. And we track and see when something goes from innovative to emerging to best to become common and expected. And we can see how things will change over time. So with that, the 10 traits of a sustainable hotel in 2030. First, you actually cannot be a sustainable hotel in 2030 unless you engage the owner and have an owner who cares, is interested. There are these innovators out there now, but by 2030, you can't implement a sustainability agenda if you don't have a dialogue with the owner. Those of you in development need to be pitching sustainability to the owner from day one needs to be engaging and working with the owner because you cannot have an owner disinterested to be at the table. And we know this because of all the things that they need to implement, especially with costs. There's a coalition for this that we have built in Asia, started by many in this room as well, to actually help start the dialogue with owners. And I encourage you to take a look at the hot coalition. So number two, and then power team. Sustainability will not just be, and it cannot just be compliance dollars and cents. Does everybody in the hotel really care about the energy, electricity consumption? But how many people in the hotel are responsible for it? People care about people. They care about community, making a difference, giving good experiences to guests. And so engaging the team, having a green team, having roles, having things that can help people in the hotel make decisions, be empowered, and make a difference is going to be expected. Number three, GSTC, if you've never heard of GSTC, that whole question of what is a sustainable hotel, what's the label, what's the standard, what's the framework, GSTC has solved that. The uptick of GSTC, it's now mandated in places like Turkey and Singapore. It's the platform base for the criteria and things like booking.com. We already see hotel companies aligning in Thailand, like Centara, and it's going to be the common certification that hotels will need to have. 
Quickly on this, number four, renewable energy, renewable electricity. There will have to be power by renewables in purchased in markets, as well as what can be done for on-site and PPE. That's going to accelerate in Thailand and elsewhere. Number five, net zero. Net zero, the plan and action for how you're going to get your hotel to decarbonize. That plan and target will need to be in place by 2030. So everybody will need to pay attention to net zero. Number six, green cleaning. The products, not only for the guests and their health, but for the staff, for the employees. That will be common by 2030. Number seven, plant-based options. The market for plant-based food is going to grow fourfold. It probably will be the default that your cappuccino will have oat milk instead of cow milk by 2030. And there's going to be plenty of that that will be expected by 2030 in the hotel of the future. Finally, procures wisely. Where did it come from? Where is it going? That's the name of the game. Thinking about what you're purchasing, where did it come from? And working towards something called the circular economy. This will be the name of the game of thinking. Where did this come from? Where is it going? Now, number 10, the most important is that sustainability in 1992, you cannot solve it alone. That was what governments realized. And number 10, a hotel will have to collaborate within its destination. You have to collaborate to find solutions. And this is what Phuket, as an example, and I'd like to invite Bjorn, the president of PHA, to come up. Phuket is a great example. Closing Maya Bay gets together Phuket comes together and finds solutions, and we create this event called FIST, Phuket Hotels for Island Sustaining Tourism, which creates award-winning. We bring and give practical solutions to catalyze, content, educate about all these things, and we encourage you to come to FIST 6 live and in person, September 4th in Phuket. Can I get a fist bump for FIST? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And let's, let's have Thailand thank and Phuket you, be you. the ones who 20 years from now refer back to how sustainability was catalyzed in the industry because everything we've seen today means it's possible.